welcome to NPTEL myself Dr. Jayanto Das from Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering IIT Kharagpur. I will be teaching you advanced materials and processes. Last class we have started our discussion on the functional properties of nanomaterial and we had a look at the tuning different optical and electrical properties not only the bulk nanomaterial but also by making some composite. However, majority of the cases this quantum confinement or quantum dots or a very small particle size has a very strong effect on even the optical properties. Today we will discuss some more functional properties like thermal properties and one of the very major application areas in case of nanofluid and coupling uh, with a nanofluid like a like a ferrofluid means here two properties like the magnetic properties as well as the size reduction are together. So, uh, let us start with the thermal properties of the nano material. So, here um, uh, the melting temperature is definitely one of the very major aspect which we also talked earlier and uh, the melting temperature could depends on the particle size. Now, there could be two possibilities. One case we are uh, considering that a individual particle or independent particle and we have many surface atoms and because of the many surface atoms which has some broken bonds at the surface. Eh? So, uh, and radius of curvature increases the more number or more volume is appearing at the surface. So, in that case the material has a higher energy level also hmm? and uh, so uh, all these properties are linked with the melting temperature actually. And so, if we consider just like a individual particle, uh, so uh, the, the interfacial energy of the solid liquid interfacial energy is linked with the change of the melting temperature. So, T melting which is equal to T 0 for very large particle uh, where there is almost no such kind of surface atom effect uh, divided by the L 0 into R. Okay. So, here the gamma S L by R is associated with the increase in the internal pressure that resulting due to the increase of the curvature. So, the if the curvature increases the internal pressure actually increases. So, in case 1 actually we are talking about individual particle. However, we can also think about that whether a particle is embedded in a matrix. Now, let us talk about this case 1 in detail. So, let us assume that I have a nanoparticle with a solid radius of r and then uh, partially it was melted. So, at the surface I have uh, a thickness T and a liquid has just appeared. Okay. And so, in such a situation uh, we can uh, think about that this melting temperature uh, modification is equal to T 0 into 1 minus 2 gamma by R. Okay. If we increase or uh, decrease the R value, okay. if we decrease the R value then we increase this value and automatically the melting temperature will decrease. That is already uh, people have already uh, proved that. So, this is the calculated one and these are the experimentally measured dots. So, these are the data point compared to the bulk. So, bulk has a melting temperature like let us say something close to 1350, but as we the radius of the particle decreases from 50 to 10, then there is a large decrease. Now, um, this is for an isolated particle, but if the particle is embedded in a matrix is there any change do we expect. And here the basic equation that says that I have a liquid 
which is in equilibrium with a, a solid nanoparticle and this is the matrix. Okay. And these are the surface uh, or the interfacial energy terms uh, with the vectors and that should be in equilibrium. Okay. So, here is the theta let us say. So, this is the solid liquid um, interfacial energy, this is the, uh, the, the solid and matrix and this is the liquid and the matrix actually because here is the liquid and this is the matrix. So, the gamma L m means this part is in equilibrium with the gamma S m plus the cos product of this gamma S l. This is the typical equation and if we look at this equation, we can simply say that if this term means the interfacial energy of the solid and the matrix, if it is higher than the gamma L m then the melting temperature of the embedded nanoparticle means T m nano I am talking about should be lower than the T m of the bulk. Okay. It basically means that the nanoparticle will melt first before the bulk. On the other hand, if the interfacial energy of the solid matrix is less than the liquid matrix actually, then the melting temperature of the embedded nanoparticle will be higher than the bulk melting temperature or it is just the reverse. So, the melting of the matrix will occur first, but you can uh, see that if we consider a large particle that is, uh, is, is undergoing some sort of melting. So, the internal core solid is decreasing and the R value is decreasing. In that case what is going to happen? Initially it may take some time for melting, but as the size becomes smaller and smaller then the melting temperature of the particle itself decreases. So, immediately it will dissolve in the liquid. So, this is one of the very interesting phenomena as per uh, the nanoparticle concerned in thermal properties. Now, the other important properties is the thermal transport means if the uh, the, temp, uh, the heat has to uh, 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 to uh, conduct um, through a through a nanoparticle whether it will affect or not in case of heat transfer phenomena there are two other phenomena is involved with a heat transport the first one is the lattice vibration itself and the second one is the free electrons okay so uh, lattice vibration is linked with the phonon vibration and free electron basically carry the heat actually. And we already talked about quantum confinement, you may recall that for a zero dimension nanomaterial like a particle or a nanoparticle here x, y and z along x, y and z in all direction the electrons are confined eh? and that is why the electron confinement or quantum confinement we call it as a 3D confinement. Now, if it is a one dimensional nanomaterial, let us say like a rod here I have basically x, y and z, let us say z is in the this direction and I have x and I have y. Eh? So, in that case this is a 1D nanomaterial like a rod or tube and the electrons are confined in y direction and x direction, where z, z direction the electrons are not confined. So, this is a 2D confinement. Now, in a 2D material means like a thin sheet, eh, where the sheet has a thickness which is in the nano. So, let us say this is z eh, and I have a long x and y direction. So, this is x and y. So, in that case, this is a 2D nano material and electrons are confined along the z direction. So, this is a 1D confinement. So, this confinement actually changes the distribution of the phonon frequencies versus wavelength curve actually. And the surface phonon which basically appear leading to the change of the wave amplitude uh, which basically propagate. What I want to mean let us say this is a wave okay, which is propagating. The, the wave itself has a particular velocity eh? and now 
if we make uh, these all these wave together and 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 try to make the the highest peak amplitude part uh, so i get another one right so this is called a group wave okay so this whole group wave is moving towards a particular direction uh, so if this uh, um, uh, phonon light time uh, is modified using this phonon phonon interaction or free electron due to the grain boundary scattering so, what it really does actually means if I have a very very small particle and then these phonon frequencies wavelength and the surface phonon mode that appear which changes this particle uh, the particular group velocity. And the effect we can uh, try to understand that there is a let us say a, a water. Uh, so, water has some little ripples and then I am throwing a strong into it then it basically interact with the with the ripples in the water. Huh? So, this is the same as like that and if such a phenomena actually occur then um, we can think about the thermal conductivity is going to change because of this quantum effect. Uh, let us try to see the example how does it affect. In the y axis I show you actually the the thermal conductivity that is lambda 0 watt per um, mk and of a platinum uh, particle. So, if it is a bulk then uh, if we increase temperature lattice vibration actually increase and the conductivity will decrease and this is a general phenomena because electron will scatter uh, uh, because uh, the problem with the and scattering the diffusive path will increase scattering path will increase and so on. So, the conductivity will always decrease if you increase the if you increase the, uh, the, the the temperature. Now, if we take a small nanoparticle and then try to measure the conductivity the the first part of this experiment says that the thinner the film the lower the thermal conductivity there is no doubt because electrons are already confined yes. And so, the conductivity of this nanoparticle will be less than the conductivity of the bulk platinum. So, there is a decrease. Now, if we basically provide some temperature it just shows the opposite behavior. Here the temperature with temperature the conductivity increases. So, this is this phenomena what I said that like a, a throwing a stone into a water and try to look at the ripples actually. So, this is the change of the group velocity and uh, so a single layer nanofilm of platinum with 28 or 15 nanometer size particle shows even though a lower thermal conductivity, but with increase of the temperature where the thermal resistivity should increase rather it basically decreases just shows the opposite trend. And uh, so, since this is a very very interesting phenomena and the application of the thermal transport of nanomaterial uh, covers a very wide area of application in case of nano fluid. Hmm. So, first uh, it comes to our mind what do we mean by nano fluid and, and what is the use of this nano fluid. Hmm. A nano fluid uh, uh, is, is meant uh, by let us say that a suspension of nanoparticle. Uh, and here uh, you already understood from our earlier discussion that when we add a suspended nanoparticle and they always try to coagulate means the particle always try to come closer to uh, towards uh, so that we have some sort of van der Waal or, or mutual attraction and to avoid such phenomena you have to put a coating around it right. So, this coating is, uh, uh, is given in order to avoid the the van der Waals bond clusters and uh, the, there is a mutual interaction between two particles uh, and uh, uh, also if the particles are magnetic in nature then definitely they will come try to come to close together. And this coating can be done by some sort of stabilization phenomena. Hmm? Stabilization or let us say some functional group we can attach to the particle and make a make a coating around a, a nanoparticle. So, that it will maintain a, a specific distance. Okay. So, this uh, maintaining a distance this phenomena is basically two type it depends on which type of stabilizer we use. So, one is called a steric stabilizer 
another one is called as the electrostatic charge stabilizer. So, in case of sterilic stabilizer, we can add some sort of this functional group and so on. So, this stabilization phenomena is very common in case of colloidal chemistry eh? because they want to produce some colloids and, and suspended nanoparticles and so on. So, they are in order to avoid uh, coagulation, they usually add surfactant. So, here also I have a nanoparticle and the surfactant is, is added here and because of the addition of this layer, so there is always a separation distance between this particle to avoid the coagulation process. Now, we can also use some negative positively charged electrostatically uh, stabilization process where let us say a positively charge uh, are attached to very close to the particle and the negative charges are around it and they will repulse each other and avoid this kind of uh, uh, whatever uh, Van der Waals forces act between the particles and to keep some safe distance in order to make a effective suspension. So, uh, this particular nanofluid uh, why we are talking about definitely has some uh, large application and we have seen that the thermal transport is one of the very important phenomena when we uh, decrease the particle size actually or thermal conductivity. So, here we can use this particle uh, for kind of uh, conducting uh, particle. Uh, usually, we add maximum up to 10 percent of the nanoparticle. The reason is very simple because beyond that it shows that, that it become ineffective and so if we want to add 10 percentage of maximum nanoparticle, we have to also add surfactant and this surfactant amount uh, should be more than the particle amount that we have added. So, let us say if we have less than 10 uh, volume percent of nanoparticle, then uh, we have to add let us say greater than 10 volume percent of the surfactant and we need a, 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 a um, carrier liquid uh, which will carry the nano, uh, nanoparticles. So, either uh, we can use oil as a carrier liquid or let us say simple water uh, we can also use. So, this suspension are, are designed in such a way that the Brownian or molecular movement is uh, will prevent uh, the sedimentation process. So, let us say I have nanoparticle and which has some stabilization and this nanoparticle will always have some Brownian motions uh, and these due to this Brownian motion uh, the particle will never be uh, sedimented below a beaker. This is let us say a beaker and the particle will try to sediment right. If there is a sufficient Brownian motion and taking energy from the system and, and keep on rotating in different different places, then we can keep this uh, particle as suspended particle. So, uh, let us try to look at what are the properties or functional properties uh, people uh, has reported. So, this is a thermal conductivity is shown in the y axis and the particle volume fraction. So, this is 1 percent, 2 percent, 3 percent, 4 percent and 5 percent and copper nanoparticle is added and alumina nanoparticle is added and the copper nanoparticle you can see uh, since it has a as a better uh, conductivity. So, definitely the conductivity with uh, the base fluid conductivity increases let us say uh, this is uh, 1.4 let us say 40 percent. So, this is a conductivity ratio please try to understand is 1 is the ratio with the base actually. So, conductivity ratio increases. So, very similar way if we add alumina particle in a nano fluid, then uh, it also increases. So, um, we can tune the, the, the thermal conductivity using this thermal uh, transport process of the nano particles. Now, uh, therm, uh, this uh, nano fluid uh, there is also another important aspect that it can change the viscosity dynamic viscosity. Uh, so, uh, here also we use similar type of maximum 10 percent and so on and uh, the particle volume fraction in a in a in a glycol is uh, is also reported. So, here is the dynamic viscosity which is Pascal into second like points and the particle volume fraction is increasing from a very very less number let us say something like 10 to the power minus 5 it is very very less actually. And uh, the red dots are the experimentally measured data points ok and what you can see here uh, noticeable that the viscosity remain constant up to a, 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 a certain particle volume fraction and then it continuously increases ok. So, the, the, the viscosity become proportional to C cube in this side actually 
Hmm? And this is basically the constant part actually. So, um, we can simply model the system and try to look at that if I need these uh, 10 to the power 2 Pascal into second viscosity in a glycol, then we have to add copper oxide of such a percentage. So, we can tune the viscosity of liquid also. So, uh, nano fluid has a has a a larger opportunity to to in 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 uh, engineering and functional properties due to its uniqueness and now if we introduce another property into the system means i have a nano fluid but the particles are in magnetic in nature right so now you have different different forces like weak van der waal forces between the particles and the particle itself is magnetic so they have their own attraction or repulsion and if i apply a external magnetic field then the whole situation is going to change, eh? whether the applied magnetic field could be very uniform or non-uniform. Okay? So, in this case also let us say uh, people usually use some super paramagnetic uh, nano particle in a liquid and to avoid magnetic coagulation uh, that must be coated with a second distance holder phase like a stabilizer that uh, used in a colloidal chemistry. And ferrofluid usually contain maximum up to 8 percent here we added uh, for a effective suspension to produce and uh, effective separation distance as well as we use surfactant uh, which is greater than the percentage of the nanoparticles. So, that we get a uniform coating actually around the particles. So, normally oil or water very similar like nanofluid we use as a carrier liquid here also the Brownian motion actually um, uh, movement that prevent the sedimentation of the particle and uh, in absence of any magnetic field. But if we apply magnetic field, then we are again imposing another uh, uh, force into the system which may change the movement of the, of the particles. So, in presence of a magnetic field, the movement prevent the demixing uh, of the suspension and magnetic sedimentation that can be avoided by some magnetic uh, um, particles which is not too large let us say. So, uh, in this direction this Rosenwick was one of the very um, pioneer for ferrofluid and he has told about some sort of instability how it occur due to this multiple interaction with the van der Waal force, magnetic force, interparticle um, forces and so on. So, uh, the experiment is very simple here let us say a glass plate is kept and then a ferrofluid is kept on the top of it and then we put a, a small permanent magnet uh, at the bottom and try to look at the movement of the nanoparticles. And here you see that this ferrofluid um, which is a suspended matter they make a corrugated surface uh, which is a result of the interaction between surface as well as there is a gravity and the magnetic energies. Uh. So, this is the appearance of a ferrofluid in an inhomogeneous magnetic field because we have only one magnet. Eh? So, this is the inhomogeneous field that produce actually. So, around the south and north pole and uh, it changes the, the surface feature of the ferrofluid. But what is the application of it? Yes, uh, the application is also here. Uh, we can apply a ferrofluid to seal off some, 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 some feed through. So, means I have a permanent magnet I apply and then I, I uh, put some ferrofluid and it goes to, to certain very small channel uh, where there are magnetic lines are, are cutted and, and so we can use for sealing actually purpose. As well as we can use uh, in a loudspeaker. You have seen a loudspeaker where we have actually membranes. Okay? So, these membranes actually vibrate which produces the sound actually. Eh? So, uh, and there are definitely some permanent magnets are there and we have some voice coil okay? and this voice coil actually is suspended in a, in a ferrofluid. Okay? So, this is a ferrofluid let us say. So, a high performance loudspeaker uh, uh, can be made out of a ferrofluid and uh, the role here of the ferrofluids are three which basically center the voice coil within the magnet. So, we have the ferrofluid which keeps the coil inside the center position as well as it act as a coolant for the voice coil mm, and remove the heat that caused by the ohmic losses. Uh, so, there is a resistance and definitely there will be some heat generation in the voice uh, in the in the um, in the um, loudspeaker and also it act as a damping system 
So, the definitely a high performance loudspeaker can be generated and also let us say the vibration sensor can be generated using a ferrofluid how it is done. So, we have a field coil here let us say and this is a sensing coil. Okay. So, here ferrofluid act as a sensor where we basically put a tube and ferrofluid is added inside it and this is the vibrator let us say. Hmm. This is the sensor and we put it inside and then we measure actually the, the current. So, this is a uh, ferrofluid using some uh, kerosene and we have used a magnetite of 1.1 volume percentage with 16 nanometer particle size. Hmm. So, uh, this vibrator will uh, when it vibrates this ferrofluid because of this change of this uh, um, that, uh, the, the, the magnetic field it produces some current and it gives a signal as a sensor. And uh, it also can be used as a magnetic pumping system or let us say some sort of medical imaging purposes. And those are very high end technique these days where we use NMR nuclear magnetic resonance uh, or um, uh, imaging technique actually. Uh, you have heard about magnetic resonance imaging MRI for scanning our brain and so on uh, for identifying any kind of um, um, tumor diagnosis and so on. So, medical purpose imaging become much more easier when you use a ferrofluid uh, and how because we have added some magnetic particle that goes to a specific location of the body and then uh, there are some, uh, some uh, protons that flips with the applied magnetic field. And so, here there are parallel or anti parallel type of situation of the applied field and it gives you basically uh, helps you in case of imaging with a better resolution. So, NMR uh, resonance frequency uh, that flips the protons uh, with a parallel or anti parallel type of magnetic field and uh, with the applied field and we can see that this could be directly proportional with the external field. So, we show you basically uh, two different images uh, which has been taken uh, from a Novokiv hepatoma of a rat liver. So, here this is without and this is with let us say some gamma Fe2O3 nanoparticle and simply it increases the contrast of different parts of liver. You can see so, which is not really visible this part is not visible and this part and this part, uh, but it is visible here. So, using some sort of tumor diagnosis or organ we can use some, uh, some uh, ferrofluid uh, which goes to a specific location and, and we can also functionalize so that it can be uh, attached to the protein and goes to a specific location. Uh. So, this is another uniqueness of the, the ferrofluid. So, with this we basically uh, um, complete today with uh, the different functional properties of nanomaterial what we have today discussed along the direction of the thermal properties, ferrofluid, nanofluid for thermal conductivity and so on. And we have noticed that yes adding some percentage of uh, nanoparticle which are suspended in a nanofluid or in a fluid or carrier fluid we can tune the properties like thermal conductivity a lot. And with this we complete today's discussion, we will continue uh, the discussion uh, in the next class. Thank you very much.